Dealers from Inuria. And we have uh, five uh, presentations, so three long papers and two short, two notes. So we have actually also two honorable mentions awards. Uh, and don't forget also to vote for best talks. Okay, I will repeat it at the end. So the first talk is going to be presented by Miroslav Baczynski from uh, Max Planck Institute, Saarland University and Alto University. And actually, first I will give you the <laughs> uh, awards, the honorable mentions. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Hi all, uh, I'm Miroslav, uh, I'm third year PhD student at the uh, Max Planck Institute for Informatics and Saarland University. Uh, I work with uh, Antio Laus Virta and uh, Jürgen Steimle and uh, collaborate with Gregorio Palmas and Tino Weinkauf. So uh, in this talk uh, I will show results of the first systematic comparison of main types of touch surfaces. We use biomechanical simulation and uh, optical motion capture. Uh, and this method is uh, something that you can apply also for your studies to analyze it, your uh, input methods. Uh, so the data expose large differences, large and surprising differences in performance, uh, postures, and uh, fatigue uh, between these touch surfaces. So. Uh, here you see a gallery of uh, popular touch surfaces. We would like to inform how to design a comfortable and uh, yet efficient uh, interaction for them. Uh, so interaction which has good uh, performance and ergonomics. To do that, we need uh, to understand how human body is involved uh, during interaction with these surfaces. If you compare these surfaces from biomechanical perspective, uh, they are obviously not equal, but they are often treated, treated uh, as being equal by designers. For example, some designers just uh, replicate the same uh, input method uh, design across different types of devices. Already now, there is some evidence uh, of severe ergonomics issues with these surfaces, and uh, there are also some uh, less severe but annoying effects, uh, such as fatigue or uh, strain. Uh, and uh, with our paper, we want to address this. So, uh, concerning related work, uh, uh, our paper is the first one to look uh, at ergonomics and performance in synchronized way, and uh, also the first one which analyzes all surfaces together. All previous studies considered uh, a single as aspect of uh, individual surfaces uh, with respect to uh, either performance or ergonomics. Uh, our contribution in this paper is uh, threefold. So the first, uh, it, it is the first study using optical motion capture and biomechanical simulation for uh, analysis of input methods. Uh, Second is that in this paper we uh, expose uh, large differences which were not discovered before uh, among surfaces and uh, interaction postures uh, in both ergonomics, performance, uh, and also what, what are typical postures of interaction. And the third contribution is uh, the data set which we uh, make public for the community for further, uh, more detailed or focused analysis. Uh, so uh, I will go to method, and uh, here you can see the overview of our method. Uh, first, we uh, collect data from a pointing task study where 40 users did reciprocal pointing uh, with target covering the surfaces. Uh, the study was within subject uh, design uh, where each participant did all tasks at each surfaces at each surface. Uh, the study was performed in motion capture laboratory and uh, uh, we also recorded uh, external forces using instrumented chair uh, for sitting posture. 
uh, to not constrain uh, users' posture, uh, they were told that they uh, can use any posture they want and uh, uh, which is comfortable for them. Uh, then, after we uh, perform study, we uh, have uh, two types of analysis. First type is uh, ergonomics analysis, in which we extract uh, ergonomics indices. Uh, we do this with biomechanical simulation and then uh, additional processing of uh, the simulated data. Uh, also, in ergonomics uh, analysis, there is another step in which we uh, identify typical postures. Uh, used by uh, participants. And the uh, second phase is uh, analysis of performance. So uh, we model throughput using uh, fit slow uh, models. And then uh, we combine, uh, we synchronize and consolidate these two parts of analysis into single data set. Uh, so uh, I will show here the, the study. So we Perform, uh, users performed uh, equivalent uh, pointing tasks on each uh, surface type. Uh, the only variations were in the scaling of the setup and uh, uh, the orientation of surface. Uh, indices of difficulty and uh, uh, other uh, conditions were the same. Uh, from uh, During the experiment, we record optical motion capture uh, and the external forces. So uh, on the uh, left you can see user performing task and uh, on the right you can see uh, outputs of uh, the system. So actually recordings. Uh, cloud of points which are uh, which correspond to markers attached to the user and the uh, arrows correspond to external forces. Uh, good point with using uh, biomechanical simulation and optical motion capture is that uh, we perform just regular uh, pointing experiment and uh, uh, in order to use optical motion capture uh, it needs only 20 minutes overhead per user so that it can be applied. Uh, then obtained uh, marker data and force data is further used uh, for analysis of uh, performance and ergonomics. Uh, so here I tell about uh, performance analysis. So uh, we take a marker which corresponds to uh, end effector of uh, our participants. And uh, here you can see uh, traje trajectory of that marker projected uh, on uh, uh, this plot. And uh, from this trajectory we can identify uh, both effective targets uh, between which movements are performed uh, and the lengths of each individual movement. And then when we have a set of aimed movements from A to B, we can easily uh, apply uh, traditional fit slow and uh, model performance uh, and uh, throughput. Uh, now about biomechanical simulation. So we use a cloud of points to fit musculoskeletal model to that cloud of points. And uh, then, from this musculoskeletal model, when we uh, have movement with, with respect to uh, uh, in, in human-centered coordinates, uh, then we can extract uh, different uh, ergonomics indices. Uh, for example, uh, angles at joints, uh, moment at joints, uh, forces inside joints, uh, forces exerted by our muscles, and uh, our muscle activations. Uh, by further, uh, processing of, the, of this data, we uh, compute uh, integrated muscle activations which uh, correspond to a measure of fatigability of movement. Uh, so let's move to results. Uh, first, uh, I will tell about the data set. Uh, this is basically a huge table with, uh, which contains description of uh, more than 100,000 movements and uh, uh, each movement is described by uh, more than 1,000 variables. And these variables are, uh, can, can be separated into four blocks. So uh, one block describes uh, uh, experimental metadata, so uh, uh, experimental condition, uh, target locations, uh, user age, height. Uh, second block 
describes uh, tragic, uh, trajectories in 3D space. So uh, we, we have uh, trajectory, we have uh, velocities and accelerations. Uh, third block describes input performance. So uh, effective target sizes, effective target locations, uh, movement times, uh, uh, fits model parameters, and uh, R squared for of that models. And the uh, fourth block uh, describes physical ergonomics indices. So there is a lot of these indexes which I listed uh, on previous slide. And uh, the, dat the, the data comes into uh, two levels. So first level is when we have each value per frame. Uh, so movement is recorded 480 frames per second. And for each frame we have uh, value of uh, ergonomical value. And the second level is uh, aggregated level. And uh, uh, the, the data set is published uh, to HCI community. And uh, it can be analyzed with uh, any uh, statistical software or MATLAB. Uh, but we have also developed a special vis interactive visualization tool, uh, which can simplify analysis of data set and uh, uh, understanding of uh, in variables involved. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you want to uh, see demo and uh, the tool, the data set, you can come also tomorrow to uh, uh, booth H3 in exhibit hall. And uh, so further I continue with results. So I will show main effects. Uh, first, we find up, uh, up to 40% differences uh, in uh, fits based throughput. The best is a smartphone with two hands interaction and a tabletop. And uh, the lowest throughput is uh, with tablet and laptop. However, uh, laptop and smartphone with two hands interaction, they uh, need the, the least amount of uh, total muscle activation. So they uh, will be less fatigable for a uh, user. And the uh, public display is the worst. Uh, so it, it is uh, 2.5 times, uh, it needs 2.5 times uh, larger total muscle activation comparing to laptop. Uh, so further, we can uh, look also into more details. So here you see a plot. Uh, we, which muscles are uh, uh, active during interaction with each type of device? Uh, so if, uh, Intensity of color highlights how strongly uh, the muscle was recruited during the interaction. Uh, so here we found, for example, that uh, uh, here, here you can clearly see that with tablet, uh, muscles which are involved uh, in the strongest way are muscles which hold tablet and uh, muscles which uh, uh, our shoulder muscles which support this interaction, which support uh, interacting hand. And uh, on other side, when we compare to uh, interaction with uh, a laptop touch screen, we don't have uh, these muscles which hold uh, device, but uh, there is stronger activation of uh, frontal deltoid muscles, which hold our uh, arm higher in front. Uh, so there are also many other things which can be analyzed about muscles. Uh, now, uh, starting from this slide, we show a few analyses which are not described in the paper. Uh, we perform them uh, after the deadline. Uh, and the data set is huge. It is not possible to analyze everything. So we put in the paper aggregated data and the uh, uh, detailed analysis were later. So uh, one of the effects is that uh, 95% of users uh, use incorrect posture, which uh, put excessive strain on uh, their backbone on neck and uh, uh, lumbar spine. So here you can see uh, average postures uh, in which people interacted with uh, different interfaces. And uh, uh, red areas denotes uh, strain strained 
areas in uh, human body. And as you can see, uh, the largest strain is uh, during smartphone single-handed interaction and uh, uh, for uh, neck uh, backbone. And uh, the lowest strain is uh, for laptop. And uh, we can also describe this further uh, when we separate this uh, mean posture into uh, typical user postures. So uh, as you remember, uh, in our study, we did not impose any constraints on the posture. And uh, then to identify what are postures, we have, uh, what are typical postures, we have uh, performed clustering on the inverse kinematics data. And uh, this clustering uh, shows that, uh, for example, here you can see mean posture for smartphone two hands interaction and uh, three typical postures for uh, interaction with smartphone. And uh, also, these postures, uh, posture clusters, look similar. Uh, it is not the case because, uh, as we can see farther, the difference in uh, next strain is uh, up to five times comparing uh, used postures with ideal posture. And uh, uh, this difference is large, and it is very important because uh, very important to consider because. Uh, when our neck is strained and uh, we repeat interaction in this posture uh, multiple times over a longer period of time, it can lead to repeated strain injury or uh, some other uh, un, uh, not, not good uh, effect. And uh, this analysis is not in the paper, but this is just one example uh, which can be found in the data set when looking there farther. Uh, here is similar analysis for lumbar back when differences are also uh, 2.5 fold. So uh, to summarize, uh, we have applied optical motion capture and biomechanical simulation and uh, it is very rich analysis method and uh, promises promising for analysis of interaction. Uh, in this talk, we have shown large differences among touch surfaces in variables of interest to designers, namely uh, in, in throughput and uh, uh, mus total muscle activation and uh, uh, joint stress. And uh, finer details could be found by looking at uh, posture and muscle activation closer. Uh, we released a data set uh, that uh, can be used to improve touchscreen devices by anybody of you and uh, create cross-device applications, uh, personalized devices, and so on. And uh, both designers and uh, users uh, should be aware of interaction in strain in pose and uh, how uh, dangerous it can be. Thank you. mentioned that there were several postures for several, for example, different devices that were not, but uh, you were able to identify some bad postures. Do you find any correlation between the postures and the performers? For example, could be the case, for example, that I take a bad, uh, dangerous posture, but I, in order to increase performance, did you see anything like that? Uh, so actually, we haven't analyzed, uh, we haven't compared these bad postures with performance. Uh, but uh, I think this is also I I interesting direction. So uh, I think why people choose bad postures is because they are not aware of how bad they are and how stressful, and they don't relay stress uh, with their interaction with the device. So. Hi, uh, Edward C. with Smart Technologies. This is really interesting work. Thank you for, uh, for doing this detailed analysis. Uh, I was wondering if you have considered uh, expanding some of the work to think about like what could be done in those kind of scenarios. For example, in a public display, how could we improve a public display? For example, I don't know, curving it or angling it or doing something to the public display to make it 
better ergonomically or less straining. Uh, similarly, you know, for the, the situation of the tablet, you know, maybe if you had a stand or something like that, you know, how would that improve the, how would that affect the ergonomics? Like, are there quick, what I'm wondering is, are there quick wins? Are there simple things that can be done uh, that can dramatically improve the ergonomics or reduce the strain for users? Uh, so, uh, I can respond to uh, part of question because we haven't uh, analyzed in general what can be done. But for example, with, with tablet, uh, when we use support, uh, it will reduce some stress and uh, uh, it will reduce stress in our neck if we have tilted support. Uh, it, it will be kind of similar to interaction with uh, laptop touch screen to this respect. From other side, we increase uh, our muscle recruitment. So uh, we need to use our muscles to avoid uh, strain to our joints. Cool. Thank you very much.